Let's go to a developing story that we've been covering throughout the day. Let's cross over to the Rafah crossing, the Gaza side of the Rafah crossing, and our correspondent Yusuf El Halou. Yusuf's been waiting for that U.S. convoy to pass over from the Egyptian side of the border. Uh, Yusuf, tell us, sir, what's going on? Yes, I guess finally the uh, aid convoy led by uh, British uh, Member of Parliament George Galloway has just entered the uh, Gazan soil. And as you can see, George Galloway and the rest of uh, the American representatives are making sujood. Uh, finally, that uh, they arrived uh, in East Gaza via the uh, Rafah border crossing. Okay. Uh, 200 American citizens from all over the United States of America, Christians, Muslims, Jews, from north, south, east and west of the United States, and we are all here to say that the siege of Gaza must end. The siege of Gaza must end because it is a criminal siege which is killing people because of how they voted in a democratic election. We are a humanitarian convoy. We have brought with us medicines and medical equipment, but we have been forced to leave more than half of the value of our convoy behind in Alexandria because we were not allowed to enter through Rafa with the vehicles that we have purchased with the best part of a million dollars of American people's money. We ask President Barack Obama, we ask President Barack Obama to match his beautiful words with actions because action speaks louder than words. The Palestinian people are starving. They have no medicine, they have no power, they have no clothes, they have nothing that is needed for elementary life. And words are not something that you can feed your children. Our next step is to come in now with our huge convoy, the biggest ever American convoy to Palestine. What's your message to the Arab leaders now? Well, it's a shame, you know, that the Arabs have to live under the governments that they live under. But it's a bigger shame that Britain and the United States of America continue to prop up those governments with money and diplomatic, political, and even military support. But if the Arab world cannot come to the rescue of the Palestinian people, then we will try to do it from outside. We came from... Listen, listen one minute. Okay, one last point. We came from Britain, the land of Balfour. We came from America, the land of Bush. The next time, we're coming with President Hugo Chavez, Viva Palestina, Venezuela. Viva, viva Palestina! 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 Viva, viva Palestina. Viva, viva Okay, there you have it. That was uh, <clears throat> British Member of Parliament George Galloway giving uh, a brief statement. As you can see, the first of those convoys now coming through from the Egyptian side of the Rafa crossing. A lot of noise there, a lot of media attention inside the Gaza Strip, but it's been a long battle to get only half of one million dollars worth of aid from the American people inside the Gaza Strip.
Ten days uh, these activists have been held on the Egyptian side of the Rafa crossing by Egyptian authorities who would not let the <coughs> humanitarian aid or the activists through. But now they have managed to get through. As George Galloway said, though, half of their $1 million of aid left in Alexandria as it was not allowed to go through. But yet they have managed to get the biggest humanitarian aid convoy from American, America through the Rafa crossing uh, over to the Gaza Strip. It includes medicines and food supplies toys for the young people and young children of Gaza. And as you can see, those convoys now managing to get through the Rafa crossing into the Gaza Strip and some military police and uh, uh, personnel there you could just see in the background. These uh, humanitarian aid workers and activists only allowed to be in Gaza for 24 hours though. Uh, we did speak to the official on this uh, side that you're seeing on your screens now, which is the Gaza side of the crossing, uh, earlier in the day here on Press TV. Uh, he was saying that they're only here for 24 hours, so their schedule has been condensed to allow them to do their work uh, in the Gaza Strip. No information yet uh, from the Egyptian side, from Egyptian officials, why they were only allowed 24 hours uh, in the Gaza Strip. But this big news for the residents, the media operatives and uh, officials inside the Gaza Strip because, as you will know, the Gaza Strip is closed off to the outside world under a three-year Israeli siege, often criticised uh, by being under a, an Egyptian siege as well because that uh, side of the border to cross over to, Ga uh, to the Egypt also cut off. We're keeping a close eye on this story throughout the day and evening, so do stay with us uh, for more on that. But for now, there's some more news.